David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Uh, today I have for you a brand new pen which just launched a day or two ago, depending on uh, when you're watching this review. Uh, it's a pen from Shown Design, and it is their Faceted Pocket 6. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Faceted Pocket 6, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it, I'll show some size comparisons, measurements, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Ian Show, the man behind the brand, for providing one of the first production pens of this model uh, and getting it out early to me so I could uh, get this review close to the launch date for this pen. I've reviewed two previous versions of this model. Uh, if you aren't familiar with Schoen Design, uh, this is Ian Schoen. He is based out of Philadelphia where he has a workshop. He creates the designs and manufactures the pens himself. Uh, he also makes some very cool watches. Uh, Ian is also known for producing an innovative ballpoint pen and has an evident passion for the creation process. Uh, the pen arrives in this simple plastic box. Uh, it has some instructions on the bottom. And inside there is an ink cartridge and we have the pen. This is the Faceted Pocket 6. Uh, the pen is available in two different materials. There is one in copper and a second in brass. The one I have here is the brass model. Over time, both of these models will patina. Uh, in my personal experience, I found that copper will patina a bit quicker than brass. Um, also, you will find that the section of these pens, uh, as well as any others that use this type of material, will tend to patina quicker than the exposed portion of the barrel, mainly due to the increased humidity inside the cap due to the water levels in the ink. I'll show you during the uh, size comparisons, but this model has the same dimensions as the original Pocket 6. Uh, the differentiator with this model is the addition of this very cool faceted treatment. I think this looks amazing. This is not a hammered technique like I've shown you on pens like the Wancher Japan Blue. This pattern is machined using a lathe with milling cutters. Uh, Ian designed this pattern to look almost crystal-like. Um, he wanted a pattern that was consistent, but not too obvious, like a checkerboard or a random, like the hand hammer technique. Uh, it's actually reminiscent of a Japanese method of cutting potatoes in a faceted manner. Another cool thing about this design is that the faceting will actually patina and wear differently at different depths. So it'll be interesting to see how the looks of this pen changes and evolves over time. Um, I really like this design. It's very tactile. It feels very interesting in the hand. And the facets actually help you maintain a solid grip on this pen when you're carrying it around. The end of the cap is rounded and smooth. Uh, the cap and barrel are straight and separated by this unmilled band on the cap. I think this was a good design choice, rather than having the texture across the entire pen. Um, it helps create a, a visual transition between the cap and the barrel. Plus, from a machining standpoint, I believe this might have been easier than trying to match up the pattern on both sides of a seam. Uh, at the end of the barrel, you have the posting threads. Uh, the edge of the threads are angled at the top, which I feel helps with the ease of posting this pen, as opposed to an end with sharper edges. The cap unscrews. Uh, there is an O-ring in the cap, which you can sense on the last like half turn or so when capping and uncapping this pen. The O-ring creates a seal so that if ink should ever seep inside the cap, it won't leak outside the pen. And it helps seal the nib from outside air, which would evaporate your ink. Um, once you unscrew the cap, you will discover one of my favorite features of this pen, a number six Yovo nib. Now, you actually have a lot of choices when it comes to this nib. You can get a Bach nib in either extra fine, fine, or broad, or you can get a Yovo nib in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, uh, and then 1.1 and 1.5 stubs. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The standard section here is concave and made of brass to match the rest of the pen. Uh, for an additional nominal fee, you can have the option of the longer grooved section. Uh, here's a look at one of those sections. Now, the copper section here looks a little bit odd on this brass pen, but you get the idea. 
On this longer section, the nib is uh, inset a little bit deeper than on the concave version. Of the two, I like the looks of the straight groove section, but I kind of like the feel and functionality of the concave one a little bit better, but they're both very nice. Behind the section are the cap threads. Even though they're metal, I don't find them to be sharp or uncomfortable, even if your grip should rest on them. And then there's a medium-sized step up to the barrel. The cap does twist to post. Um, on several occasions, I've mentioned my personal opinion on twist to post pens, and it is generally not positive. Um, I find that most are a bit clunky to operate, and I don't care for the aesthetics of the pen if you choose to not post it. Uh, this pen is an exception to that. Um, the cap posts easily in just over a single rotation, and once you've posted the pen, it's now the size of a standard fountain pen. Um, in addition, I really like the tactile feeling of on the facets on my hand. Um, for a pocket pen, this pen is not light. It comes in at 39 grams, but I find that weight to be evenly distributed and the pen to be well balanced. Now, this is a cartridge-only pen. It takes in standard international ink cartridges. A converter is too long to fit in this barrel. Now, if I'm just taking a quick note and I don't feel like posting the pen, um, I often use it like this, with the pen kind of jammed in my palm like this. Uh, now, while that would be uncomfortable for extended writing sessions, if I'm just writing something down quickly, I find it works really well. On the Shown Design site, the base brass model of the Faceted Pocket 6 retails for $250, and the copper version is $272. So the price of these particular models are starting to get up there compared to the base models of uh, the Shown Design pens. But I feel that the increase in price is warranted here. You're getting a high quality, uniquely crafted pen from a small independent manufacturer that is innovative and creates some outstanding pens. Uh, the Shown Design aluminum models, which I've previously reviewed, start as low as $118. So if this faceted model starts to get a little bit out of your price range, then I'd encourage you to check out those aluminum models. Uh, they are both very much worthwhile. I'll put a link in the notes below to where you can check these out on the Shown Design site. So now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. So here we go with some size comparisons for the Shown Design Faceted Pocket 6. Just to get another look at that, just look at those facets on there. I just like the way they catch the light as well. It's just a very cool and innovative feature on that pen. Uh, in regard to a couple other Shown Design pens, uh, this is one of the aluminum models. I just love the color on this one. And then this is one of the copper pens. And here it is with a Quebeco Skyline Sport. Then in regard to some other comparisons, here it is with a Pilot Prera. And then here it is with a Twisby Vac Mini. And then finally, here it is with a Lamy All-Star. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, or should I say posted comparisons, because that's how you're going to be using this pen. Uh, in regard to that, here it is with a Prera, and then here it is with a Caveco Skyline Sport, and then finally here it is with a Lamy All-Star. And so you can see that once you've posted it, it's basically the same size as an All-Star. So here we go with the writing sample for the Shown Design. And that's D-S-G-N. And this is the Faceted Pocket 6. This right now is a medium stainless steel nib. Uh, and the ink that I'm using is Mont Blanc Petrol. 
Uh, this is what the ink looks like. Um, it's kind of a blue petrol color as opposed to something like the Lamy petrol that came out a while ago. And I would say that's more of a green based petrol color. Uh, and then here is a Sailor Yamidori, which is kind of in between the two, but kind of leans more towards the green of the petrol. Uh, this is what the larger Mont Blanc bottle looks like. I've always liked the caps of these bottles, uh, and I feel that so far I am winning because uh, this is the first review in the last three where I have not dropped this bottle on a hardwood floor. Okay, here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I find this medium Yovo nib to be very pleasant. Um, you're not going to get a ton of line variation out of here. Um, you might get a little bit. This ink has some decent shading to it. In regard to ink flow, it's decent in regard to that. In regard to reverse writing, I'd say it's adequate. It is a little bit on the sharp side. And in regard to some fast writing, the feed has no issues in keeping up. So there we have the Shone Design Faceted Pocket 6. Um, I really enjoy the Shone Design pens, and I think that this faceted model is a, a very, very nice addition to their lineup. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.